when given that everything um, in general revelation says something to us about God, what would you say to someone who struggles or has a dream where he thinks or she thinks that God is talking directly to them? Um, how would you deal with that great. dream as far as in light of special general revelation? That's great because I think that what this doctrine teaches, what this approach teaches is that is quite contrary to the way it often happens, especially when people become theologically educated. Right. Uh, what they start doing is they start discounting things like premonitions or dreams or intuitions or just that kind of, you know, that feeling you have. Um, and you, if you go around, um, especially students of theology, talking about the Lord, I feel the Lord's leading me to do this, and that kind of thing, everybody sort of rolls their eyes and, yeah. you know, they intellectualize it, yeah, whatever. What did right. you eat for breakfast this morning? Okay. <laughs> well, the fact is, is that what you ate for breakfast this morning is general revelation. And those premonitions you have, even, in their, even when they're wrong, is general revelation. Because if it exists, it is revealing God. See, that's what's so strange about this. Um, it's, it's sort of like um, when you think about murder, for example, which is wrong, the Apostle Paul says that that's one of the, in Romans 1, that that's one of the things that reveals God to people. They know that, what, that the people who do such things deserve to die. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. So a premonition, a, um, an intuition, a dream, um, any kind of psychological experience, all of this is part of what happens in life and therefore has the implications of revealing God to us and God's will for us. Now, you know, what we don't want to do is to cross the line and to start giving a dream or giving a premonition or an intuition the role of special revelation. You don't want to write a dream in the back of your Bible. And unfortunately, right. there are Christian groups that do that. You know, they'll, they'll call it a prophecy maybe, that someone prophesies over them. And, they, and, and I've been in circles like that. I mean, I have, I've been there. I've even done that to people, much less received it. But when someone prophesies over someone, use that kind of common term that people use today, and they say things like that are not contrary to the Bible, they'll say things like, the Lord is going to bless you. He's going to use you. One day you will be known as a servant of God around the world and things like that. Well, that is, that is something that should be taken as part of general revelation. And that means that insofar it is true, and even insofar as it is false, it's going to say something to me about God and God's will for me. And if that kind of word comes from Christians over and over and over and over again, or perhaps in the case of a dream, if you keep having the same dream over and over and it's so powerful on you and you pray about it and you ask the Lord to give you guidance about how to evaluate it and what to think about it, if it continues to rest in your heart and continues to press upon your soul, then you need to take it more and more and more seriously as guidance from God. Now, let me see if I can sort of lower the intensity of this a little bit by saying this. Um, even in my own tradition, my own branch of the church, that tends not to think very highly of dreams and premonitions and right. intuitions and things like that. When, um, when people are asked, why, are you, why do you feel you're called to the ministry? If someone's seeking ordination, they'll ask that question, why do you feel called to the ministry? And there are two answers. And if you don't give both answers, they'll pull the trap door on you and you're gone, okay? <laughs> right. so you have to give the two answers. Mm -hmm. And the two answers are, I have an inward call and I have an outward call. Now, the outward call basically means the body of Christ has, a, has seen my gifts and they are calling me. They're offering me a job, mm -hmm. put it that way, okay? Right. That's, that's fine. But if that's all you've got to give to this ordination group, if that's all you can say about your calling to ministry, that other people have told me I ought to be a minister, well then you're out. Because they're also looking for you to say, I have an inward call. Now, what is an inward call? Well, my understanding has just been that there's a desire to mm -hmm. serve in that capacity that actually is in your heart. That's right, it's a desire, a passion inside of you. Um, it can go a step further, can't it? What other kinds of things could an inward call be? How might you articulate it? Uh, Holy Spirit <clears throat> tugging at your heart. That's, there, it's Holy Spirit <laughs> tugging at your heart. God yeah. leading me in this. Mm -hmm. I have this conviction. Mm -hmm. I've tried to. I've tried to refuse it. I've tried to go to Tarsus, right. you know, but I just can't do it. Right. God keeps pulling me back to it. Um, that's what I'm talking about. You see, that's specialized general revelation. Now, that's the one place 
in our day where my branch of the church still acknowledges that the Holy Spirit right. works in us psychologically, works in us emotionally, works in us in our premonitions and our, our convictions, our intuitions, and that it ought to be taken very seriously, even our dreams, and it ought to be taken very seriously. All I'm suggesting is, is that we need to spread that out a little more.